In their annual media update on the Daimler Renault Nissan strategic partnership, CEOs Dieter Zetcher and Carlos Ghosn announced collaboration on two new projects to accelerate development of fuel efficient powertrains. Today we are announcing two new important projects. Uh, Daimler and Renault uh, will jointly develop a 1.3 litre gasoline engine, uh, 90 to 115 kilowatt, with a very strong CO2 performance and with the start of production in 2016. And then Daimler, Nissan and Jatco have entered into a manufacturing and development license agreement for a brand new automatic transmission currently developed by Daimler. According to this agreement, Jatco will manufacture in Mexico this automatic trans uh, transmission for the, for the alliance uh, needs. As well as looking forward, the two CEOs reflected on how well the companies have been working together. And I had the opportunity yesterday night to visit uh, the techno center of Renault. Um, most likely it was normal that at 8 o'clock in the evening everybody was there. Perhaps it was related to my visit, I don't know, but I guess it was a normal situation. Uh, and I saw the joint teams with my own eyes, I listened to them, uh, and it was a great experience. Um, over time we have built so much trust, meanwhile, that we are really working like, uh, like uh, hand and glove. Uh, and they were always presenting together, and you didn't even know who came from where. Okay, the accent told you. They all spoke English, and uh, so the accent uh, told you who came from where. Um, but still, uh, it was a living example that this partnership from an intention in the beginning now has developed into a reality, uh, which is fun, which is tough. Sometimes we have, as Carlos said, uh, different opinions, um, but we are always solving them. The session included a media Q&A with approximately 100 journalists. First question, is a merger on the cards? Can I answer? I mean, you can be happy with the flirt without being happy with the marriage. So, it's, I mean, you don't have to go to another step. I mean, I think the beauty of this cooperation is the fact that Dieter is independent, he has his own autonomy, I have mine, and we don't need to tie up much more other things in order to make the synergies work. This cooperation was about scale, was about sharing, and it's working very well, obviously due to the fact that, uh, you know, many people tell me, yeah, maybe it's working because you have a good relationship with Dieter. It's certainly a very important element, but there are more objective elements like the fact that, frankly, we are not competing against each other. That's the main reason. Whatever question comes on the table, we discuss, and then we discuss it on its merits and on the interests of our companies. And then we look at the, the pros and the cons, and then we come to a conclusion that it makes sense or it doesn't. But not that we say, please let's not talk about that. The next issue was whether increasing protectionism around the world could lead to cross-manufacturing. We just announced that we will produce the A-class out of a Velmet plant uh, in Finland. Why the heck should anything prohibit us to, to produce a Mercedes uh, car out of a plant uh, which is owned uh, by Nissan or Renault. So that's, and I think last year we even mentioned that this un most unfortunate increase of protectionism in a number of countries, uh, which is limiting access to some of these markets, might lead to exactly this kind of yeah, solutions exactly. that together we find a viable solution <coughs> to enter this market with more local content and either one on its own couldn't do it. Questions on the impact of ongoing economic concerns were inevitable. Let's talk about Europe first. Uh, car sales in Europe minus 8% this year. Uh, maybe Dieter has a better prospect for next year, but we are not very bullish on Europe next year. We say at best European market would be stable, but more reasonably it will continue to decrease. And frankly, we don't see so far on a reasonable horizon any rebound in Europe. So we are gearing towards some um, many tough years in Europe for the years to come, which means we have to be frugal. We have to be frugal. We have to be very cautious on our investment. We have to be very cautious on our uh, cost. Uh, the scale of the operation in Europe are going to go down. So this is if it has any impact, it has an impact to cooperate more in a certain way 
to try as much as possible to increase our scale, save on our investments, gain, uh, gain on time. Both CEOs emphasised with all the pillar projects remaining on track, the collaboration continues to move forward.